Uh, we will be starting Bible study tonight, again, virtually. Uh, had a delay in our start, but we did start on last week. We began to talk about being prepared for warfare. All right, and we said prepared was to be made ready. You're ready to go to war, ready to go to battle, and you're also fully equipped. All right, and then a warfare. A warfare is something that you're, is two opponents. They're fighting against one another. And the intent of warfare is for one to destroy the other. All right, and we began just talking, and last week we came out of the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we read uh, from verses 10 and went on to verse 18. And it was Paul uh, talking to the church of Ephesus, letting them know that they were to be fully armored. And this armor was the armor of God. It wasn't just a natural uh, type of armor, not like a natural soldier that you would see back in those days. But he was talking about a spiritual armor. All right, that was our protection, how we go to battle in. And tonight we're going to focus on verses. We'll begin Ephesians chapter 6 again, our main scripture. And we'll focus tonight on verse 14. We'll begin reading at verse 10 again. But our focus tonight is going to be verse 14. And tonight we don't have the PowerPoint had technical difficulties. All right, and so Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 10, this is Paul, his letter to the church, the saints of Ephesus. And he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right, last week we said wiles was a type of trick, deceitful tricks or manipulations that the devil uses against God's people. All right, and these tricks, their intent, the main intent is to get our focus off of the Lord. All right, it's to get us to back up, all right, to back down, to feel as if uh, that we're inferior to the devil. That's what, that's his intention to do. All right, in verse 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, so Paul was letting them know your enemy is not one another. All right, you have to understand that when you're, when you're in a warfare, you war against spirits, principalities, all right? He says against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places, all right? But you do have, oftentimes, you can... Um, being a warfare, maybe with the individual, but it's not the flesh and blood of that individual. It could be a spirit or the devil using them, all right, to war against you. Verse 13, he said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, meaning from your head to your feet, be clothed in the armor of the Lord, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. All right, and if you have any type of eye to see, you can see that we are in an evil day in the time that we're in now. All right, and we're warned, I said last week, we're warned a warfare against spirits that we have never fought before. All right, and so verse 14, our main focus for tonight, it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right, so tonight we're going to focus on our loins being girt with truth and also having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right, and I will give you a few definitions. Start talking about the loins. The loins is, it consists of the lower back and extends down to the hips. All right, so the lower back area down to the hips. And then he said, you, we gird our loins with truth. All right, to gird is to secure on the body with a belt or cord. To secure on the body with a belt or a cord. Also meaning to prepare for difficulties or challenges. That's what the term gird means to secure on the body 
with a belt or a cord or to prepare for difficulties or challenges. All right, I also was doing some study and I saw the phrase, gird your loins, they often said that uh, to one another. Usually there was a head man who notified the other people who were in a war, the soldiers, he was letting them know that you're about to go into a fight. You're about to go into a battle. All right, and if you notice, the, one of the first things that Paul said when he was talking about having on the armor, he first warned them, have your loins girt with truth. All right, so he was letting them know that you're about to be in a warfare, you're about to be in a fight, all right, not a bed of roses. Some people think that when they come over on the Lord's side, that it's just all just a bed of roses. Everything's gonna be smooth sailing, all right? But when you think about it now, when you come over on the Lord's side, you're now the opponent of Satan, all right? So he's gonna do everything he can not to just distract you. He's gonna do everything he can. What he's trying to do is to destroy us, all right? He's trying to destroy our walk with the Lord, okay? And said, also, I was looking and it said a girdle kind of went long with them being girded. All right, a girdle, it was more so of like a belt or a cord which surrounded the waist area. All right, it extended around the waist and the girdle was also, they also wore it because it held a place on it that held the sword. All right, the sword, and I thought about these two, uh, verse 14 and 17, somewhat coincide with each other. All right, he told them to have, if you jump down there, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, he said, take the helmet of salvation, but you look at it, he said, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, so the girdle was an important part to have surrounding the waist because it held the sword in its place, all right? So the girdle was a belt or cord surrounding the waist, and it held the sword in place, and it also aided protection to the loins. All right, I was looking at, also in that, the loins, uh, it kind of extended from the lower abdomen area on down. All right, and it was as a protection, as such like a barrier. All right? So you think about it, he says, we're to be girded with truth. All right, so during warfare, you can write this down if you want to. During warfare, we must be surrounded with God's truth so the enemy will not be able to deceive us with his wiles. All right, and will not be able to wound us with his tricks and his manipulations. All right, one more time. During warfare, we must be surrounded with God's truth so the enemy will not be able to deceive us with his wiles. All right, when I was, was looking at that, he told them, be girt with truth. Or you can look at it, be surrounded with truth. I thought about how you think about the church, the condition of the church now. All right, he said that girt can be much like a belt. A belt holds everything up, it holds it in place. All right, so if we stray from truth, if you leave truth, you forsake truth, you take it off to be ungirded during the time of warfare, it was a dangerous thing to do. All right, because when they took off that girdle, they took off that belt, it exposed all those vital organs and they could be wounded or killed. All right, we said that when the enemy is fighting, he's not just trying to get you to sit down for a season, but he's out to kill you. All right, so you think about if the church world has strayed away from truth, has taken off truth, we're left for kill. All right, and you, a lot of people, they try to say that, you know, well, the church hasn't changed or whatever, but we can look at the state of the church now. You can look at the condition of the church world, not just one individual, but you can look at the body as a whole and you can see that truth has been taken down in a lot of areas, all right? And that's a dangerous thing to do, all right? Because when you stray from God's truth, you open prey, all right? We said that we don't want the enemy to be able to deceive us with his wiles, all right, with his tricks. When you lay truth aside, every deception, every manipulation that the devil has 
if he can use it against you. When you, you're no longer surrounded by the truth of God. All right, and then he also went on to say, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right, a breastplate during the time of war, it was a metal covering, all right, a metal covering used to protect vital organs in the chest cavity. Breastplate was a metal covering used to protect vital organs in the chest cavity. All right, the importance of the breastplate was to provide protection to vital organs in that chest cavity, but specifically the heart. All right, and the reason being was because during the time of war, the heart was one of the main targets. Because if that heart was struck with that sword or whichever weapon they were using, that soldier was dead in an instant. All right, a strike to the heart was an immediate kill. Okay, breastplate, that metal covering used to protect vital organs in the chest cavity. All right, and if I flip over here, when I was reading about that, the breastplate was a main attention. It kind of focused more so on the protection of the heart. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, in just one verse, that's verse 23, this is uh, the writing talking about keeping our heart or guarding our heart. All right, that's what, in the natural, that's what the breastplate was doing. It was guarding that physical, that natural heart. So in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, right, and verse 23. Okay, he said, keep thy heart, or guard your heart, with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. All right, keep thy heart with all diligence. Protect that heart, for out of it are the issues of life. All right, and then the definition of righteousness was simply the quality of being upright in the sight of God. The quality of being upright in the sight of God Righteousness also can mean to be just when it's according to the word of God and also having a pure heart. Purity of heart. All right, the quality of being upright in the sight of God, not the sight of man, to be just and purity of heart. Now again, to think about this, when you think about when you're in a warfare, we know our, our battle is not against just each other, not flesh and blood. But you think about when you're in a warfare, when you're going through your trials, going through your tribulations, one of the main things that you have to really pray about is what's in your heart. All right, what takes place in the heart. Because a lot of times we can go through trials and it may be bitterness set in, doubt begin to set in, fear begin to sit in when you're going through some of the worst trials that you ever faced, the darkest place that you've ever been in in your life. A lot of these things, he said, out of it flow these issues of life. All right, and it's important. He said, you put on that breastplate of righteousness. All right, so we, we want to remain upright in the sight of God. We want to remain one that has a pure in heart. All right, Matthew told us only the pure in heart shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart but they shall see God. We want to remain just in the eyesight of God. All right, and I also go to the book of Psalms, Psalms 106, Psalms 106 and verse three. All right, that's just dealing with righteousness. Psalms 106, verse three. All right, he said, blessed are they that keep judgment. When you actually go and you look at, uh, you go to the original Greek, 
meaning of righteousness, you actually see the word judge or judgment. All right, it says, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. All right, so you think about when I read that and I saw that the word judgment kind of coincided with righteousness, I thought about the scripture that said if we judge, if we judge our own selves, then we won't have to be judged. All right, if you can examine yourself, make sure that that heart stays pure, stays guarded. All right, because again, we don't want to be deceived. That's all that the devil is trying to do, deceive us. You start going through warfare and the devil try to get you where God didn't left you. He ain't with you no more. He don't love you no more. You might as well just give it all up. What you've been staying on this path all that long for, and it's in vain. That's a deception. All right? And he tries to manipulate. All right? You remind, I re, re, think about all the time in the book of Genesis when the Bible said that that serpent that was in that garden was the most subtle beast in the earth. All right? The most, he was wise, but he was a cunning and a crafty type of wisdom that he had, all right? He was one, he tried to manipulate. You think about how he got in Eve's ear, how he began to talk to her, all right? And that's just, he does the same thing to us, all right? He'll get in the ear, he'll begin to try to talk to us, try to get us to be deceived, and that's one thing we do not want to do, all right? If we stand, if we stand fully armored, it won't be so easy for the devil to do what he's trying to do. All right, if we, if we are fully armored, the whole armor from our head to our feet, all right, it won't be so easy for these tricks. The devil won't be so quick to get over on us. All right, we won't be so quick to fall into these deceptions or these snares. All right, we want to be those who have our loins girt with truth. We don't want to throw truth away. All right, we don't want to stray away from truth. And we want to remain one that has the breastplate of righteousness. All right, and I did have pictures, but we had a little te technical difficulties. I was going to show how that belt was made. The, the belt, the girdle, was usually made of leather. All right, and that leather, it was usually a tough leather. It, tried to, it was usually meant to hinder the piercing of a sword to be able to go through. Okay, and that breastplate, it was usually something that was, it was a thick type of metal. It was a heavy metal, but it was thick to keep those organs protected. All right, and we wanna make sure, keep righteousness at the forefront. All right, make sure that, okay, I don't want nothing to get in my heart. I don't want, I don't wanna be one that begins to doubt the Lord because I'm in a, the greatest trial of my life. All right, I don't wanna be one that begins to say, well, I don't know, maybe this is all in vain. That's a manipulation that the devil is using against God's people. All right, we, we have to stand in faith. All right, we have to stand steadfast. Okay? All right, and we cut it kind of short tonight. We got uh, some lightning and thunder going on. All right, but we want to be prepared. Prepared uh, to fight. Prepared for warfare. All right, because you, you think about it now, we're in some great trials. we in great warfare. All right? And we don't have time, I said last week, we don't have time to try to get on the battleground and then try to suit up. All right, a good soldier is fully equipped ahead of time. All right, a good soldier has their armor in place and they make sure that everything is just right, make sure nothing's damaged, that nothing's out of tact. And we know that we in this world all right, we said last week, even Jesus said, Satan is the prince of this world. All right, and I told you last week that some people, they're convinced that Satan has no power. Well, he don't have no authority. All right, if you're in your flesh, the devil can, oh, he can overrule you now. But it takes the Holy Ghost. You think about the scripture that says that the Lord has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. All right, over Satan, of the devil. But it has to come, it comes with the Holy Ghost. All right? All right, so we're going to be talking about that this month. We want to stay suited. All right, we don't have time. I said, uh, I was looking at something I was reading, and it said, when the soldiers would ungird themselves, that was on a dangerous time for them. All right, we don't want to be those who get at ease, get at comfort, and feel like, okay, well, I don't have to be as aware. I don't have to be as sober. If you've ever been sober, 
In the hour that we in now, we must truly be sober. All right, be well aware of what's going on. Be well aware of what we're fighting against. All right, because as I said before, there's some spirits that we haven't encountered even yet that we're going to be fighting against. All right, and I believe that the Lord is sending us a word, sending us wanting to be ready. All right, don't wait till the last minute to try to be suited for this fight. All right, and we're going to end it right there. All right, pray we did say something to help somebody. Do thank God for our pastor, Pastor Anderson. Thank God for our co-pastor, Pastor Doyle, his companion, Sister Sabrina. Amen. Thank God for Church of Dothan, Dothan Holiness Church. All right, thank God for all those who do tune in on the live. All right, that join us. Thank God for all of you who did join on tonight. Amen, we do. Pray that you keep us in prayer and we do the same for you all. And that'll conclude tonight's Bible study.